Hey guys, welcome to the Bourbon Hearing Podcast. I'm your host, Austin. Let's get started. So today we're taking a little break from our series. I'm thinking about releasing episodes for our Engineering the Perfect Whiskey series about every other week with a different episode in between. Kind of break it up a little bit because it is science heavy and, you know, information heavy. Not that this one isn't, but it's a little bit different topic today. We're talking about barrel picks. And I've done this before. I've talked about barrel picks before. But this one, I'm going to get a little bit of a deeper dive. And I have three different barrel picks from around my area to try for you while recording and giving you feedback on them. Just to really show you the differences from one barrel to another. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to start with from the beginning and tell you what a barrel pick is. Uh, A lot of you probably already know this, so stick with me. But... I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. So a barrel pick is when usually a retail store, whether it be a liquor store or around here, any old store can do it, or a restaurant, or even sometimes bourbon societies and whiskey groups go to a distillery or a distillery mails, especially right now, mails you samples of different barrels for you to try so they will literally send you or you go out there and literally thieve whiskey out of a barrel each sample is from a barrel usually it's cast strain sometimes they proof it down to what they're going to bottle it at but you get to pick anywhere from three to as many as you want barrels and you pick which one you like best and then they bottle it for you and you sell it at your store or restaurant as your very own barrel pick from a distillery. Very common places you'll see a Knob Creek, uh, Four Roses, Wild Turkey, or Russell's Reserve, excuse me, from Wild Turkey. Uh, diff- a lot of different places have a single barrel program. That's just basically how it works in general. And so- Different distilleries run it different ways and have different rules, so I won't get all into the weeds on that. But in general, that's how it goes. And usually it's a group of people representing a store or a restaurant. Now, as a bourbon society or as a group, you can do barrel picks as well. I know I've talked about the Baton Rouge Bourbon Society barrel picks on here before. And basically how you do that, at least around our area, is you still have to go through a store. We go through a local uh, retail partner who basically gets buys and sells the barrel to us we just are guaranteed we're buying it it's going to have our label on it instead of the stores it's it's a good deal because the store makes money the distillery makes money and we get great bourbon and great uh barrel picks it's a very cool process but it's still we go through a store so it's still technically although we can put our society name on it and our sticker it's technically going through a retail store. So I'm going to go a little more details on how we actually pick barrels. Again, right now and most distilleries, even before this, will usually just send us samples rather than us going to the distillery to pick it. But they will send us samples of th- usually three, sometimes maybe a few more samples from different barrels. And you'll have the information on these barrels, age, the location, all that. Sometimes you don't know that until after you pick your barrel, but you'll have all that information. And you try it, you and or a group of people or whoever you have on this pick, try each sample. Maybe they'll water it down to whatever proof it's going to be bottled at and try it again, rank them, try them blind. Any way you want to do it, really, it's your. if you're in the group, you're running the group, it's your decision on how you pick the barrel. But from there, you pick it, and you send it in. You send it to uh, the distillery, your pick, and the distillery will at some point batch your, uh, or excuse me, dump your barrel. Either let it, either dump it, stop it from aging, let it sit till they're ready to bottle, or just let it sit in the barrel a little bit longer until they're ready. And then bottle it and ship it to your store, including the barrel. Usually, you you're buying literally the barrel. So you have the barrel to play with sometimes. It depends on the distillery, but but usually it's the case. And you get to uh, put fun stickers on your bottle. Uh, A lot of that, you know, it's kind of the the go-to right now is the fun stickers. Some places will have a little plaque on it saying handpicked by insert name of store or restaurant here or 
bourbon group. So it's a cool process. It's fun. And you get to call it your own because you picked it. It could be really weird and off from what it's actually labeled as. A good example of this is uh, if you listen to another fellow podcast of mine, the, uh, uh, excuse me, the podcast, they did a pick at Buffalo Trace that would was bottled as Eagle Rare, but it was a completely different mash bill than Eagle Rare usually is and tastes completely different. Um, so that's kind of some interesting thing about barrel picks. You can get things that are completely different, even though they're bottled as a certain brand of, and that brand is a flavor you expect. Anyway. All right. So now I'm going to move on to why are single barrels different? So I kind of talked about that they can be different, but why pick barrels? If you're doing three barrels of wild Turkey, why don't they all just taste the same? Just you pick any random barrel. Well, that's because to get, as I talked about last week on my uh, engineering the perfect whiskey with the grains, that each barrel will taste a little bit different. And for consistency, you need to batch a bunch of those barrels. Uh, again, I go to Maker's Mark, who's known for their consistency. They're really good at blending barrels together to make it the Maker's Mark flavor. You know that that flavor you expect when you buy a bottle of Maker's Mark. But each barrel, even though they do a lot of rotating the barrels and moving them around the rickhouse to get consistent flavor from barrel to barrel, they're still going to taste a little bit different from barrel to barrel. And it's the blending that makes it taste the same. That's true for any distillery. So why? If two barrels are sitting next next to each other, you know, distilled at the same time, at the same age, why would they taste different? Well, there's a few different uh, pieces to that. So... The biggest one is they're stored in different warehouses. Big, especially big distilleries will have different rick houses all across their property and even different locations. And each one's going to have a different elevation, a different way of facing the sun, different heats, different natural tendencies, different sizes even. So that's one of the biggest differences. But even once you get into the same where uh, same rick house you're gonna have different ages think barrels were distilled at different times so that even if they're within the same year they're still going to be months apart which can make a big difference in a whiskey um then whittling it down different cooperage so i mean most of the time the barrels from one distillery are made from the same cooperage but they're still handmade products and they could be slightly different they could be you know both number three char barrels but one could be a little bit more char than the other even to like where the naked eye can't notice it and that'll cause a difference also even within the same rickhouse different locations temperature rises so the higher up a barrel is usually the hotter it gets during the summer um that's just in general it's not totally true some people circulate air but different temperatures are temperatures are different within the location even on the same floor pressures are different as you go up some of these really tall rickhouses you'll see a lot different uh barometric pressure on the top than the bottom and the humidity is different throughout the store. Some might get more uh, humidity, some might get more airflow and kind of knock that humidity down. All these, there's even more factors than I've mentioned, but all these play a role into the different flavoring of the whiskey. Even at the same age, same rickhouse, roughly the same location. It's very, very interesting when you try two barrels next to each other, how different they can be. All right, so now... I'm going to explain my little barrel pick flight I have going, kind of what's going on with this, and I'm going to give them quick reviews. So, again, as a bourbon society, we got six uh, Russell's Reserve picks from around from around the city slash surrounding cities and states. And at the time, there was all the Russell's picks in the area. Now, there are a couple more have come out since then. So, we can't really claim this being the best in the area, but we did at the time. Uh, anyway, so we tried six of them as a group. A group of about 30 or 40 of us. We voted on which is the best, and it was almost unanimous. Um, and we voted in order. So, I'm not going to review all all of those again for you here. I'm only going to do the top three and talk about what the top three picks were. Uh, a lot of my listeners are from the area, so this will be helpful for them. But even if you're not, uh, if you're ever in the area, these are great stores to check out in general. 
Um, they are, this is not an endorsement. They're not. I mean, it is an endorsement. I'm endorsing these stores. They're not paying me to do so. Um, they don't really know I'm doing this. But I'm going to retry the three and give you my thoughts. And then I'm going to give you the rankings of the group, which my rankings pretty much agreed. There's a little bit of difference, but for the most part, my rankings agreed. So, uh, again, this isn't blind anymore. It was at the time when we did it. So that's why I'm not giving you my results now other than my notes, maybe. Um, but the official results I'll give you after I try these three. But I thought it'd be cool to walk you through what happened. Um, again, the, I'm only doing the top three of these six, but all... All six were bottles I'd be happy to have. They were all great. I just want to point that out there. None of these picks were bad. Um, but these are going to be the top three of the six. So number one, which is actually sample number four. It uh, The notes I get on the nose. It's very sharp alcohol forward. But it's like a rich caramel and creme brulee. Like a fancy dessert. You know, something you get from a fancy restaurant. Not just your basic chocolate pudding or you know i don't know basic box cake it's a rich dessert same thing on the taste the creme brulee jumps out and that sounds very very pretentious when i say it i realize that but i just can't describe it as a sweet dessert it's got to be something fancy it sounds pretentious because it tastes pretentious in a good way um it is a little hot and then i get like a note i get like an a I, I guess it's the kind of the dryness but it's a cabernet a note i get in a cabernet wine Kind of uh, grapey, if you will, but not overpoweringly so. Not like it's finished or anything. Just kind of a reminiscent note. And then finally, cinnamon toast crunch. There is a little bit of that more basic sweetness there. I originally said cinnamon toast, like the actual cinnamon toast, but there's something a little cereally there at the very, very end. Finish is long, delicious. I love this. Now let's compare it to the next one. Now remember, these are all... Russell's Reserve picks, so they're all, uh, I don't have the, the bottle information about the warehouse and any of that, but they're all roughly around the same age, released around the same time. This next bottle, number five, it's less sharp than the first one, but the sweetness is a lot more simple, a lot more like a simple sugar rather than a, like a uh, creme brulee or a rich caramel. A little bit of brown sugar in there, and then I get a strong dill note on the nose, like dill pickle. Not the vinegariness, but the just the dill, and I'm not a fan of that. All right, tasting it, I get sugar cookie, you know, kind of something kind of flowery there that's really, really sweet, but then like a salted caramel, almost like a car- maybe a caramel cookie inside a chocolate chip cookie. That dill is there, and I do not like it. It's a lot less rich and decadent than the than the uh, number four. This is completely different. Like you put these side by side with me blind again, I couldn't tell you these are the same brand. Now there are some. There's definitely some Russell, some Wild Turkey classic notes in there, and it may have been guess of two Wild Turkey products, but it's not obvious, and they're very very distinct flavors. All right, finally, on our last one here, this nose, I get rich cake and salted caramel, and this one is the most, I put in quotes, most turkey of them all. This could be Wild Turkey 101 with flavors, not flavors added, but with layers added in the richness. It's I don't know how to describe it, that kind of like a rusty, I don't know, I just associate this nose with Wild Turkey, and it's fantastic. It's a lot more intense flavors than the other two. It's not as hot tasting. Like there's no spiking alcohol notes, but it's a it drinks a lot hot. It drinks a lot like it's a higher proof. It's sweet tasting is a rich sweetness. There's so many layers of flavor here. It's like boom boom like a fine scotch really. Not in taste, but in the layers. Salted caramel is definitely there, and then like a. A lighter cake, like a uh, white, uh, yellow cake kind of taste on the end. No dill, thank goodness. No astringency. This is fantastic. It's, again, night and day from five. And it's a little closer to four than five, but it's still obviously a different whiskey. I wouldn't I wouldn't mistake them for the same barrel for sure. And that's, that's my three. So I'm going to give you my quick rankings of the three. I'm just going to make a note out there that I agreed 
with uh, number four and number six. So the first one I tried and the last one I tried, I agree wholeheartedly with the group. And you'll see where I did not agree with five. Um, five was one of my least favorite of the group, but the group voted it uh, second, actually, I believe, or third, maybe, in the overall rankings. So I don't know. But anyway, so to announce the winners, my second place, but the group's third place is uh, sample number four. So the first one I tried today, and this is from Oak Point Fresh Market here in uh, Louisiana. They're our partner store for the Baton Rouge Bourbon Society, and they picked a amazing barrel. So good job, guys. Uh, my second to last to last place, but the group's second place was the second sample I tried which is from Lincoln Road Package Store in, uh, I believe, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. It's the only one that wasn't in Louisiana. Uh, people call it a honey barrel. And they are they are known for their picks, and they have great picks. I do like their picks, but not this one. I don't at all. Like I said, I'll drink it, and I'd like a bottle of it. But it, of these six, it was not my favorite. But it was the group's second favorite, so something might be wrong with me. Uh, and then finally, our winner, my winner is the last sample I drank today, which is sample number six in our rankings. It's from Hocus Pocus Liquor here in uh, Prairie Valley, Louisiana, real close to me. Again, one of our partner stores for the Boundary Bourbon Society. And Alex over there, they picked a really good barrel. So go check the all three of these stores out if you get a chance, especially Oak Point and Hocus, our partner stores. If you're ever in the Louisiana, Baton Rouge area, come check us out. But... Um, Man, this number six was amazing. So shout out to Hocus for that pick. Thank you all for listening to this. I know it's a little bit shorter, but we'll get back into our Engineering the Perfect Whiskey series next week. Remember to go check out uh, the blog post that I write on the Film and Whiskey blog. That link will be be uh, be below and it'll be in my Instagram. And go follow Film and Whiskey on Instagram. Also follow me if you're not following, of course, at Bourbon Earring. But go follow at Film Whiskey to see all my blog posts. And check out their podcast too while you're there. Why not? Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks for listening, guys. If you enjoyed the podcast, make sure you subscribe on whichever player you're using. Leave a comment and leave a five-star review if you can. Once you've done that, go follow me on Instagram at Bourboneering or on Twitter at nbourbon or go like our Facebook page, uh, Bourboneering. All this, as well as my Prestige Decanter affiliate link and a link to sign up for a weekly newsletter are all below. Thanks for listening, everybody. Cheers.